Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So my plague of Nurgle has disappeared, I'm healthy again, and it's Monday, and that can only mean one thing, another return of the Primarch video. And this time we're going to discuss probably the best Primarch that the Emperor ever made, glorious Rogal Dawn. As always, I'm going to go over a brief little bit of history about the Primarch and the Legion and stuff like that, everything that happened during the Horus Heresy, and then we'll get into the 40k stuff about his potential return and all that kind of jazz. Now, during the Great Crusade, the Imperial Fist conquered many planets, uh, they conquered many systems. Uh, they were one in like the top five of uh, the uh, Legions who, you know, had all the battle honors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they had the biggest uh, Void Fleet out there, of course, during the Horus Heresy and stuff that got uh, worn down bit by bit because all the engagements and stuff but they were basically known for being the best at void combat and basically siege craft warfare so um if you were attacking somewhere that was uh, very very durable or you you needed somewhere you know you wanted to defend then it was the imperial fist you called in you you don't want to call the iron warriors because they'll just end up crying into a pillow because they can't build like a fancy road or something like that now just before the horus heresy did kick off the emperor went back to terror and with him he brought rogal dawn and the legion that's where the you know the praetorian terror title comes from and he was basically his more or less um uh bodyguard legion i know the emperor had like custodians and stuff but they also had a legion and you know to guard the emperor and all that kind of stuff so once the horus heresy did kick off um the imperial fist really wasn't involved that much because they were just stuck on terror um they were basically just reinforcing terror and just building up the defenses at terror because dawn knew that horus would eventually come to terror so he best saw like the uh the best way to uh beat Horus was just to build up the defenses and take him on on terror and just fight to the death that way he did send a small retribution fleet out towards the Istvan system um you know to help with the iron warriors the salamanders and stuff like that but then he learned of the betrayal of the other legions and he um he called it back now what has his message was getting sent out and he, he was recalling them back that retribution fleet got ambushed by the iron warriors and a young captain known by the name of Pollux, basically wipe some pie on Perturabo's face because he was about to beat Perturabo at his own little game. But the message came in and Pollux, being an imperial fist, followed his father's orders to the word and said, right, everyone pull back. And they were like, well, we're going to lose all these men and stuff. He's like, we don't care. Father has given us the orders. Let's get out of here. And they all retreated. And the Iron Warriors kind of won. Kind of won. Let's say kind of won. Not fully won. Kind of won. Now, we don't know the full details about the Siege of Terror because that is yet to be written. We know some of the old lore and stuff, but I'm sure that's going to be changed. So we can't really go down that route. Um, but we do know, which is part of the new law, is that Alpharius was sent to the Soul System to start, you know, like the infiltration kind of warfare to prepare for Horus's arrival. And um, he was met by Dawn. And the long story short, Dawn ended up killing Alpharius. He, he was in a duel one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And uh, Dawn was victorious, and um, he killed Alpharius. So it goes to show that Dawn can actually beast another Primarch in battle. I think he's only... How many Primarchs have killed another Primarch? You've got Horus, who killed Sanguinius. You've got um, uh, Lehman Russ, who... Well, he didn't really kill him, did he? He basically broke Magnus across his back. Um, and you've got uh, Fulgrim, who killed Ferris Manus. So, he's basically in, you know, top five of brother killing brother. So, congratulations, Rogel Dawn. You are an absolutely amazing Primarch. What we do know at the Siege of Terror is that once uh, Hor Horus's Void Shields were let down, we don't know how they're let down, I've got a sneaky feeling that s a certain somebody... Um, is going to let them down. I'm, I'm thinking Loken, in a way, gets up on the ship and he turns them down and something like that happens. Well, that's my dream anyway. And um, Rogel Dawn uh, teleports onto the Vengeful Spirit with the Emperor, Sanguinius, a couple of custodians, a couple of, you know, some of the best of the Imperial Fist, uh, that, that kind of stuff. They all get split up. Um, of course, we all know Sanguinius goes in first. Sanguinius um, is rumoured to put the, uh, the chink in Horus's armour. And then and the Emperor comes in, finishes him off. But of course, in the meantime, the Emperor is basically, you know, uh, grievously wounded. Um, uh, Rogel Dawn comes in, picks up his dad and is like, Father, no! And um, he takes him back to Terra. Uh, the Emperor whispers sweet sh nothings into his ear. And um, that is it. That is basically the end of the Horus Heresy. And from then, 
uh, it starts uh, the big retribution campaign of, well, it's called the Scouring. The Scouring, where they uh, all the uh, loyalists start taking back all the planets uh, which the, the traitors uh, conquered, and they start pushing them back into the Eye of Terror. Now, this where the information gets a little bit confusing, well, personally for me anyway, um, is that um, the old law states that it was the first Black Crusade happened when um, Abaddon came out of the Eye of Terror and there was a huge chaos fleet uh, building up and the Imperial Force was a vastly outnumbered. So Rogel Dawn like, led a, a spearhead uh, assault into this fleet to disrupt it. And while he boarded one of the despoiler class battleships, I think it was called the Sword of Sacrilege, if I'm not mistaken, um, he was basically overpowered and killed. I'm saying killed in air quotes. Um, you know, he was brought down by thousands of thousands of like Astartes and serv demon. I don't know demons and cultists and just like basically Caesar stabbed to death, which kind of is a, a, a kind of badass way to go. But 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 I think that is the old law and the new law now more or less confirms that Rogel Dawn never died. It was basically he just lost his hand. You see, in the old law, it was his full body was recovered and it was encased in amber on, on board the Phalanx, which is the Imperial Fist flagship. But in the new law, is that only his hand was found and now that is encased in amber on board the Phalanx. And what happens is that every chapter master of the Imperial Fist that has come, um, he engraves his hand, sorry, engraves his name on Rogel Dawn's um, bony bony fingers let's say um but the thing which confuses me is that um aaron dembski bolden has been writing uh, a new series uh, about uh, abaddon uh, the first one was called the talon of horus uh, the the next one was called the black legion the great books by the way you should go and buy them they're really really good um and it, it basically goes into detail about uh, the second one about abaddon appearing back in real space i won't ruin it but it wasn't rogel dawn that met him it was another uh, legendary imperial fist well he's not an imperial fist anymore and uh, them two had a, a duel so i'm kind of confused um if if that is still is still law um i'm not too sure if it's considered a black crusade anymore i'm not too sure hopefully that is going to be cleared up um in future writings if if black library do go down the, the whole scouring uh, route uh, with a new series. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying, Valrak, Dawn's dead. Give it up. Your dad's dead. He's not dead. I'm sorry. He's not dead. Because, right, think of it from this point of view, right? If you are a traitor, you've just killed a Primarch, right? You've just killed him. You've stabbed him to death or whatever you bloody did to him. Why are you not going to taunt your enemy? Why are you not going to taunt the Imperial Fist? Look, I'm going to chop his head off. I'm going to dangle it in front of, like... Uh, a video vox thing and just show it off uh, um, announce it to the whole system or to anyone you come across look we've we've killed the primarch this is how serious we are it doesn't make sense is that if you go in and you bring down a primarch you don't make propaganda about killing that primarch it just doesn't really make sense to me that rogel dawn was killed and basically no chaos has spoke about killing rogel dawn now there's another big hint that Rogel Dawn still lives, and that is uh, in the Beast Arises series. Um, another great series, go and read it. I'm not going to spoil it all in this video, but I am going to talk about a little conversation between uh, the chapter master of the Imperial Fists and Primarch Vulcan. Uh, basically, the chapter master of the Imperial Fist does some like really cool, awesome stuff, and Vulcan basically turns around to him and says, um, I will tell your father of your great deeds, don't worry. And the, the like, chapter master of the Imperial Fist is like, he's got to tell, you know, like, Dawn? about me what does he mean dawn's dead and it just leaves it at that and I, I i was reading that well sorry i was listening to it on my audiobook and i was like holy emperor of mankind vulcan knows that rogel dawn is alive and i think a primarch would know if another primarch was alive or dead because in a way all primarchs are connected in the essence of the warp because they were made with the essence of the warp. I don't think we'll ever know how they were made with the essence of the warp. The Emperor did it. I don't think Black Library will ever go down that path. I think it's too mysterious and stuff like that. But they know if another brother is alive or dead. Well, personally, that's what I think anyway. So this leads on to the big a million dollar question is where in the Emperor's glorious name is Rogal Big Golden Balls Dawn? And I'm kind of scratching my head with this one and um, i don't think dawn would be someone who would just give up on his duty i think duty always comes first for rogel dawn i think i personally think that may dawn maybe dawn returned to terror to take vigilance 
over the emperor. Do you know what the custodians do near the throne? And he's in there. He's just chilling in there, waiting for maybe the uh, traitors to attack uh, Terra once again. I know there's other theories. People saying that maybe he's, you know, uh, he got lost uh, in the warp. Uh, you know, maybe it was, there was like a some kind of sorcerer um, uh, when he boarded on that vessel and then he got like you know like sucked through like a black hole slash warp portal or something and it's currently like in the eye of terror like fighting endless hordes still going on 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 you know constantly fighting constantly purging people have have even gone as far as say maybe um uh the necrons uh stole him and put him in that you know like their display cabinets is it is it is it, is it trillion the uh, infinite who does all that kind of stuff so some people have gone as far as you know saying that um, he's took him and he's uh, held him. I don't think he's got him because um, he basically has a full green clone, and I don't think he, you know, he just wants one of everything and stuff like that. So I don't think he he'd want another Primark when he's got basically a, a perfect full green clone. Um, but I personally think that Dawn basically just went back to Terra and he's just standing by the Emperor and he's just waiting for his time to be unleashed um, on the galaxy. Maybe the Emperor's just saying, "No, Dawn, I need you here." Um, and when the time is right, I'm going to let you loose and you can reunite with your chapter and then you can you can fire back into the galaxy once again. So let's say Rogel Don returns, he's back, um, he's, he comes out wherever he's been. Um, of course, we have Rebooty back, uh, Dawn comes back. First things first, no problems between them at all. They both absolutely respect each other. I know they had a bit of um, to and fro when the Codex of Static was first introduced with the splittings of the, the legions and all that kind of stuff. Dawn was a bit, no, I'm not doing this. And there's a bit of, you know, um, a bit of aggressive thing between them. But in the end, Dawn saw the errors of his ways and he agreed to accept it. And it was, it was, it was okay. It was all good. I think Dawn would just be Dawn. Actually, I would absolutely love to see Dawn um, go full Templar Dawn. Not, do you know, like Dawn is very stoic and very defensive and very, you know, um, he's he's just very in himself. He doesn't really show any emotion or anything like that. I would love him to be completely opposite in 40k. You know, he's he's still grieving for the loss of his of of his father, the Emperor. Um, but, you know, he sees that as a failed duty, and of course, duty is everything to Dawn. So I'd love him to, you know, carry on wearing like the black armor, go full on Crusader Dawn take to the stars and just go f just 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 go crusading purging everything that doesn't accept the name of the emperor i can definitely see him getting involved in uh, all the diplomacy stuff and like some of the brothers we discussed before i think dawn would 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 definitely be in there um with the way like uh, the, like the high lords of terror have turned out i know reboot is coming and he kind of fixed it in a way like removing some and you know cutting some of like the dead wood off but i think dawn would definitely get involved in more of the politics say no we're doing it this way this is what the emperor wanted you know this 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 and you know all that kind of stuff i definitely think he would rebuild terror in a way you know make it a bit more stronger rebuild the fleet uh the defenses of the soul system basically go on the full-on rogal dawn imperial fist building spree and just make it into the most fortified area in the galaxy looking at it from a law standpoint i don't think it's the best route to go down bringing dawn back because you have got the lion you know uh, we've got lehman russ with the wolf time and all that kind of happening it sets up uh, bigger and better stories but as a you know as a personal fanboy of rogal dawn he's for me, he's definitely the best Prime Mike. I absolutely love him. Um, I think I think he'd make a great splash if he did came back. Uh, if, sorry, if, if he did come back to 40k, I think he'd really turn the table um, up on its head and just cause absolute mayhem in in the ranks of the enemy and just go on purging and killing, and you know, vengeance. Vengeance is Dawn's name. You killed. Well, technically, like you didn't kill him. I, that's probably heresy if I say it. Yeah, you you wounded the emperor. You basically made Dawn fail his duty, and that's probably one of the worst things you can ever do. All right, everyone, that is me done for another return of the Primark video. As always, let me know what Primark you want next. Just post it below in the comments, and um, I'll count them up, and then we'll move on to that Primark. Let me know if you have any theories on how Rogel Dawn could return. Do you think you have something better, you know, something more logical than the stuff I've been saying? And um, Post them below. I'd love to see them. I'd love to discuss them with you and all that kind of stuff. And um, Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and have a wonderful day. See you now, and bye-bye.